Okay, welcome back. Let us continue for the next lecture. Um, we are continuing onward with um, the topic of the human eye and the human vision system. And so, uh, last time we finished talking about um, different kinds of eye movement. I went into a bit of detail on saccades and smooth pursuit. I am going to cover eye, other eye movements in just a moment. I first want to um, make a quick correction that was pointed out during the break. So, I gave the six different eye muscle names and um, these two superior oblique and inferior oblique I had them swapped in the previous lecture. So, this is the way they should be superior means on top and inferior means below. So, that is all. So, I just had these inverted rest is correct. So, eye movement number 3 that I want to talk about is the vestibulo ocular reflex. You can see it has the word vestibular in it. Oh, so this is sometimes abbreviated as VOR and it is called the VOR. So, pronounced letter by letter. Um, Here is a diagram showing how the vestibulo ocular reflex works as part of our physiology and um, these circles in the bottom correspond to canals inside of our vestibular organ. So, they are inside your ear uh, ear canal and uh, they are measuring angular accelerations. And so, um, for example, you have the right vestibular organ and that is connected through a very short kind of loop let us say that does not use your higher level brain functions at all a very tight loop it controls these uh, left eye muscles and then your left vestibular organ is controlling the right eye muscles. It is exactly these muscles that we have drawn on the board there for the eye movements and um, in less than 10 milliseconds of delay you get these these eye move eye rotations that counter the rotation of your head. There is also translational movement as well. So, it is even occurring when I do this if I just translate my head back and forth without doing any significant rotating, but the important thing is the, mo the most common thing is that when I put an object in front of me and I go back and forth like this I have the vestibulo ocular reflex working for me that is causing me to perceive this as stationary and it is again stabilizing images on my retina for that right. So, in one case the smooth pursuit it was the object of interest that is moving while the viewer is remaining still and in this case it is the viewer who is moving and the object is remaining still. Of course, you can imagine some combinations of motion of both, but I am just trying to separate them out nicely. So, so it is fascinating that it bypasses the uh, brain at least the higher level parts of the brain. Um, so, the response time is around uh, 10 milliseconds which makes it the fastest reflex in your body. So, um, purpose is to keep image stability you can imagine right away if you have a virtual reality headset that has a lot of flaws in it with regard to latency pixelation all sorts of things going on this reflex is trying to maintain image stability and you are interfering with it by presenting this artificial stimulus trying to fool your brain. If you do not get it right um, your perceptions of stationarity are, are not going to be matched perfectly. So, you get uh, counter rotations and also translations or you get counter rotations uh, to compensate for the 6 degree of freedom head motion. Right. So, you are getting rotations because of these eye movement muscles um, being connected to um, the vestibular organ. And so, all we can do is rotation right I cannot translate the eyeballs inside of our heads. So, it is doing rotations to compensate for full 6 degree of freedom motions while I remain fixated on something. 
Um, here is something fascinating that happens I mean, you should definitely be aware it is very important for virtual reality it is called VOR gain adaptation. So, in this case I am um, looking at this bottle and I move my eyes accordingly with the vestibular ocular reflex as I rotate my head the counter rotation rate of my eyes is exactly matching the rotation rate of my head right. So, it is a perfect one to one correspondence that corresponds to a gain of 1. If I were to put on some glasses and then do this very quickly I would perceive the bottle as swaying back and forth we would call that a swimmy kind of motion. Um, now, for those of you who are wearing glasses for a long period of time if you do this experiment the bottle should look stationary and so, what is happening is the the optics of your glasses are causing a distortion, but your brain is learning to compensate for that. So, your vestibulo ocular reflex this gain parameter will adapt and change to your glasses. If you take your glasses off immediately and then do this you might see the real world an object in the real world looking like it is not stationary which is quite incredible right. If you put on a virtual reality headset where the optics have distortion in them and it has not been correctly compensated your brain may adapt to that and then when you take the headset off and you do this in the real world the real world might look like it is swimming back and forth. So, when I was doing development at oculus I saw this very frequently I would have I would spend hours trying to fix uh, distortion tracking other kinds of things and then I would go um, look at the menu board for lunch turn my head back and forth and the menu board looked like it was swaying back and forth and it was not right you know. So, and I started to really question reality in many ways right it is very strange to have this happen. So, these things are somewhat invisible to us they are happening all the time if you wear glasses you you you, you know these things are happening it is question yes. Um, let us see so, we have we are compensating for 6 degrees of freedom of head motion, but we only have 2 or 3 3 degrees of freedom I guess right with the eyes in, in general I guess right, but um, <clears throat> I guess we cannot compensate completely in some cases right. So, so that is a good observation there is more degrees of freedom in the motions than there are in the um, in the possible rotations that we can apply that is correct let us see. So, maintaining visibility of you while I move my head and body around um that is a good question what is really wrong here how many um hmm it is interesting I I it is when I am doing these motions it is very hard I guess I have to think about designing a particular motion that is going to be hard right. If I do that I think my VOR is not working very well they might want to try to do some very strange figure eight motions like that um actually I do not feel too well now. Um so, so I I think that is I think I think yes it is possible to design some complex motion patterns that cannot be compensated directly by the VOR that is my my guess to your answer it is a great question I have not I have not considered that before anyone else. So, I, I did I did sort of energize everyone towards paying attention to degrees of freedom very carefully. So, you did that well that is that is um it is a good question I should have anticipated it um let us see. So, another case <clears throat> 4 is optokinetic and this is an alternation between pursuit and saccade and the reason why this happens <coughs> is for a very fast moving um rather large object that you may want to track and um you keep jumping from feature to feature on it. So, the most common example I can think of is you are standing on the ground and you are watching a train go by. So, your your brain will go into a mode where your vision system will go into a mode where it tracks a feature on the train then jumps to another one and then jumps to another one you ever do this before I, I do not find it very comfortable at all, but nevertheless it is interesting to watch a, a fast moving train when you are fairly close to it has everyone done this before. So, this is some kind of mode I cannot think of too many more examples where this occurs um 
and let's see example 5 it is a convergence and I will put divergence together. Now, you put divergence there I am not saying that your eyes are diverging outward when you are looking right. Some people may have such a condition, but what I mean to say is that when I am converged and they are looking together then when I look at an object that is far away they diverge right. The motion is diverging. So, your muscles are either pulling them towards convergence or, 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 or pulling them away towards divergence. So, that is um, two different two different directions, but it is the same phenomenon. So, so I may have my eyes um, rotated to look at something very close or not rotated together as much not oriented together as much to look at something far away. So, it is these motions between these two right. So, if I go this way then I am converging if I go the other direction then it is diverging, but it does not mean the result is fully diverged the eyes are converged in both cases right until the extreme case when you are looking at something let us say at infinity then they should be uh, parallel. Let me see where I am at on this ok. And I have one final case to cover this is the most mysterious I think much very much is mentioned about it in the book, but there is um, a lot of current literature on it. It is called micro saccades that is number 6. So, these are tiny motions they are around um, 1 30th to 2 degrees of motion they are involuntary and this may be one of the reasons why I, I showed you some some images in the first class and one of the images I showed you had looked like some kind of fractal pattern and it looked like it was moving all by itself, but clearly it was not moving and micro saccades might be one of the reasons for this. So, I have done some research on this I have found half a dozen different possible explanations of what micro saccades are good for. Um, some of them may have to do with further stabilization perhaps refreshing photoreceptors that have become saturated over time um, all sorts of possibilities, um, but, but largely researchers are debating this over the last few years, um, but just something to point out there are all these additional motions. So, the amount of instability in the images that are falling onto our retinas I really find astounding and the brain is is compensating for all of that. So, so the micro saccades category could have a, a half a dozen subcategories where micro saccades are occurring for various purposes. Um, these have been known for a, for, a, for a very very long time um, Robert Darwin father of Charles Darwin actually discovered them first. So, in the 19th century so a very long time they have been known, um, but we still do not have an explanation of um, of what exactly they are they are good for. So, why are they occurring they are clearly intentional it is not some kind of accident it seems. So.